Financing Medical Products for Women and Children's Health Financing medical products and services for maternal, newborn, and child health, or MNCH, involves mobilizing funds and using them effectively and efficiently to improve maternal, child, and newborn health. In this video, we'll look in more detail at the four core functions of financing for MNCH medical products. Mobilizing funds for MNCH medical products and related services in an equitable manner. Pooling resources to spread financial risk. Benefit design, deciding who is entitled to what MNCH medical products and what, if anything, they are meant to pay at the point of use. Purchasing, allocating money to procure, distribute, and otherwise manage MNCH medical products and related services in an equitable and efficient manner, either directly or through external providers. And we'll also look at the issue of reducing waste, for example, by tracking and analyzing expenditures and improving rational prescribing or use, as well as product management. MNCH medical products, including medicines and devices, are relatively low cost and are primarily funded by national governments and donor contributions. However, insufficient and unpredictable funding affects the procurement of MNCH medical products, their availability, as well as delivery of quality MNCH services. MNCH also lacks a global mechanism to fund MNCH commodities, unlike other disease areas, such as GABI, the Vaccine Alliance, which assists in overcoming financing challenges. Adequate financing of essential medical products, including MNCH medicines and devices, is crucial to meet global targets, such as Sustainable Development Goals 3.1 and 3.2. While countries' medicines budgets are defined as a whole, this video covers the topic of financing of medicines and medical products from an MNCH lens. Funds for MNCH medical products and related services in low- and middle-income countries can be mobilized through a combination of public and private sources. These include domestic public funding, such as taxes, domestic private funding, such as regulatory review fees, out-of-pocket payments or prepaid financial contributions from individuals or employers, and external sources, such as foreign aid. Each source has different implications regarding the ability to raise funds sustainably efficiently and equitably. Public compulsory funding sources, such as income taxes, are preferred, but tax collection is weak in many low- and middle-income countries. The proportion of funding from different sources varies across low- and middle-income countries. For instance, in Ethiopia, the financing of the country's RMNCAH investment case, which includes MNCH medical products, was expected to come from the Ethiopian government, 40%, international donors, 29%, community contributions, 6%, and individual households, 5%, through Ethiopia's Community-Based Health Insurance, also known as CBHI scheme, leaving a financial gap of about 20% of estimated costs, which would likely be covered by out-of-pocket expenses. When estimating funding needs, it is important to consider the costs associated with the management and distribution of medical products, in addition to the procurement of MNCH medical products themselves. Not including these costs may lead to stockouts, compromised quality, and or inappropriate use if good distribution, quality control, and pharmacy practices cannot be assured. In addition, the pharmaceutical system itself needs to be financed. This includes funding the regulatory agency to assure the quality, safety, and efficacy of MNCH medicines and devices, as well as other parts of the pharmaceutical systems, such as the pharmaceutical management information system to provide data on MNCH medical product use, availability, and distribution. Collecting funds in a single pot, also known as pooling, is recommended to enable explicit complementarity of different funding sources and enhance the redistributive capacity of available funds. This means that those who are rich subsidize those who are poor, and those who are healthy subsidize those who are sick. Pooling all funds raised to pay for MNCH medical products and related services protects vulnerable groups, including low-income women and children, and reduces severe financial hardships resulting from user fees. For example, in Kenya, four streams of funds, the civil servants' medical allowances, the fund for the health insurance subsidy for the poor, and individual premiums from informal and formal sectors are pooled into a single pot, the Kenya National Health Insurance Fund, or NHIF. The NHIF has an explicit maternal health care package called Linda Mama 
to improve access to MNCH medical products, reduce user fees, and provide financial protection to mothers and children. In many low and middle income countries, however, pooling for MNCH medical product procurement and reimbursement does not take place, since parallel MNCH vertical programs with multiple disconnected funding streams exist. Reducing siloed forecasting exercises through pooling and harmonizing different programs needs, such as nutrition and maternal, newborn, and child health programs, can improve efficiency, equity, and health outcomes. Deciding on coverage of medical products, that is, who is covered, what is covered, and what proportion is covered, is essential to explicitly define the population's legal entitlements and obligations. In many low- and middle-income countries, however, these decisions are not made, and essential medicines lists, or EMLs, and standard treatment guidelines are used as a proxy to define coverage. These need to be aligned and define what medical products should be prioritized for procurement and be available to a country's population through service delivery systems. However, EMLs alone do not confer legal entitlements and often lead to implicit rationing for many reasons. Countries may not procure all products on the EML, or they may procure products not on the EML if the EML is outdated, for example. Countries may run out of funding to procure the desired medical products partway through the fiscal year. Supply chain disruptions may lead to stockouts and lack of access. In countries where an explicit MNCH package of medical products and services are defined, these are not often costed or implemented and can lead to implicit rationing. For instance, the Ghana National Insurance Scheme, or NHIS, reformed its benefits to include a free maternal health package for all pregnant women. Though a full package of medicines and medical devices was identified, the financial impact of the policy reform was not costed, and after delayed reimbursements, some health facilities opted not to provide medicines to NHIS patients or demanded out-of-pocket payments, reducing access to MNCH products and services. Once funds are raised and beneficiaries identified, improving the efficiency, equity, transparency, and accountability of resource allocation or purchasing of MNCH medical products is critical. More lives can be saved and use of funds optimized if quality is prioritized over low prices during procurement and if adequate quantification practices are established. Allocation of funds for community-based health platforms and services, for example, Integrated Community Case Management, or ICCM, Maternal and Reproductive Health Services, can increase access to life-saving medicines for women, newborns, and children by bringing treatment into their communities. However, funds need to be allocated to allow for provision of the full package of medical products. With efficient tracking and rational use of funds, financing goes further. Reducing waste includes paying attention to what funds are being spent on and rational prescribing and use. For example, a three-year-old is evaluated at a health center. She should only be given an antibiotic if she has signs of fast breathing or chest and drawing, indicative of pneumonia. Dispersible tablets of amoxicillin should be used in preference to oral suspension as a way to save costs in the system, as well as to assure the correct dose is administered. Correct storage, for example, of oxytocin in the cold chain is another way to use resources efficiently, since incorrect storage leads to a product becoming less effective, potentially requiring repeated doses or additional medicines and harm to the patient. Wastage can increase, for example, by procuring oxytocin 5 international units per milliliter ampules instead of 10 international units per milliliter ampules as double the number of ampules are needed to administer the dose of 10 international units for prevention of postpartum hemorrhage. Strengthening financing of MNCH medical products means increasing money collected from public sources to pay for medical products, raising and allocating funding transparently in an efficient, effective, and equitable manner, and reducing out-of-pocket expenditure to protect individuals against financial risk. Just as with health system financing, Financing for MNCH medical products goes beyond raising money and includes four core functions, resource mobilization, pooling, benefit design, and purchasing, as well as reducing waste. Financing MNCH medical products is not limited to procurement. It also involves raising and allocating sufficient funds for the management of medical products and minimizing waste to extend the use of funds and to enhance availability and appropriate use of quality assured, safe, and effective MNCH medical products. We hope you enjoyed this video. 
If you are interested to learn more, please sign up for the Pharmaceutical Systems Strengthening PSS 101 e-learning course.